Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Civi 398 assignment guide. In this guide, we're going to be covering question number four, which is basically all about linear independence or linear dependence. So it's actually a, quite a nice little topic. It's very, very easy. You guys should have no problem at all. So the question itself says, consider the vectors x, which is equal to 1, comma, negative 2, and y, which is equal to negative 3, comma, 4. And the question is split up into three parts. And part A says, prove that the vectors are linearly independent. So that's nice where it says, prove that they are. So you don't have to figure out if they're dependent or independent. The question already tells you it's independent. Part B, find the unique expansion of z, which is equal to negative 3, comma, 2, in the basis set b is equal to x, comma, y. So a unique expansion is actually something that's not too hard to do. As you guys will see, nice, easy part to the question. And finally, part C, which says propose a new vector y such that vectors x and y are linearly dependent. So if you guys know how to find out if the vectors are linearly independent, it's pretty easy to find out or to make a vector to make them linearly dependent. So to start off this question, we're going to tackle kind of parts A and part C at the same time, which have to do with linearly independent or linearly dependent. So the definition says, a set of vectors is linearly independent if none of the vectors in the set can be expressed as a linear combination of the other vectors in the set. So I know to you guys that probably means absolutely nothing, because that's basically what it means to me. So in much more easy engineering terms, to determine linear independence, all we have to do is we have to sol solve the following equation, where we got alpha 1 times x plus alpha 2 times y, and we make it equal to 0. So this applies to higher dimensions too. We can do R3 because instead of x1 and x2, we'll have x1, x2, and x3. And same with y. We'd have y1, y2, and y3. Luckily for us, we're still in R2, so we only have x1 and x2, and then y1 and y2. So if we look at this equation right here, we know x1 and x2, those are given. We know y1 and y2, those are also given. And the zero vectors, well, it's just the zero vector. So the only unknowns in this equation are alpha 1 and alpha 2. And there's going to be two situations that happen. The first one is that alpha 1 is equal to alpha 2, and that's they're both 0. And that's very important. They're both 0. Not one of them is 0. They're both 0. And if this is the case, the vectors are linearly independent. So for your first part, part A, solve alpha 1 and alpha 2. And what you guys should find, since you guys already know that they're linearly independent, is that alpha 1 is equal to alpha 2, and they're both equal to 0. Now for part C, we're going to have to try and figure out the second case. And that is if alpha 1 does not equal 0, or alpha 2 does not equal 0. And remember the or in there, remember. As long as one of them does not equal 0, that's good enough to meet this condition. And if this condition is met, the vectors are considered linearly dependent. So that has to do with parts A and part C. So it's actually not bad. First one's a little proof. And then, as you guys will see, it's not hard to find a vector y that'll make alpha 1 not equal to 0. So that's part C. You guys should have no problem at all. Now, unique expansion. This is the one thing that you guys may not really know what it is, but you guys will find that it's actually pretty easy. So a vector can be expressed as a unique expansion or linear combination of the basis vectors. Well, again, just like the definition of linearly independence, that may just sound like a bunch of crap bunch of nothing. So let's think about Cartesian vectors. Think about eng130. In eng130 Eng we had a lot of vectors in R3 and let's take this vector right here 5, 2, and negative 3. And what we can do is we can write this in terms of the basis vectors. So if you guys remember in eng130 we had x, y, and z and their normal vectors were 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 3. So all we're doing for unique expansion is we're finding scalar coefficients and multiplying them by the basis vectors to give us our vector. So we just showed the basis vectors. Here are the scalars. Put those together. There, that, that in itself is the unique expansion. So as you guys will see, it's actually not that hard to do. Now, if we refer to our own problem, we have z is equal to alpha x plus beta y. And we know z1 and z2. We know x1 and x2 as well as y1 and y2. So the only thing missing in this equation are those scalar values. So once we find those scalar values, well, that, is, that itself is the unique expansion. 
So question four, actually not that bad. I think that you guys will get it really quickly. And it's kind of a nice change after using MATLAB. I know a lot of you guys are <laughs> not big fans of computer programming. So I hope this tutorial helped. Again, linear independence, something you guys should definitely know about. I can promise you it'll be on the exam because it's something we need moving forward. So thank you guys all so much for listening. I will see you guys in question five.